Hey there, everybody. I hope you're doing good. So before I begin, let me explain what's going on. Let me explain what we're doing here. Oh, my mama's calling. Hi, mama. It was good. It was good. How's your day going? So in the late 90s, Arthur Aaron and his colleagues did an experiment. They wanted to see if two complete strangers could grow more intimate more quickly by answering a set of 36 questions. There are three sets and each set gets more intimate. In order for you guys to get to know me a little better, I am going to be tackling this set of 18 of the 36 questions. But that's not all. I am not the only channel that will be doing this. Lindsay from Love Me A Latte. All of you INFJs out there, go check out her channel. Maria Filar. Filler, I'm sorry if I don't say your last name right, who is a wonderful artist and also designs all the merch for Frank James. And Tanya from 10,000 Days of Gratitude will also be doing this challenge along with me. Now this is going to be over a set of six weeks. And in each video, we'll be answering about three questions and we're answering them individually. So it's just gonna be me. However, the sets are being broken down. So the first three questions of a set we'll answer individually and then the next three questions of a set we will actually answer together in one video. So make sure you go check out their channels and get to know them a little better too. Okay here we go. First question. Given the choice of anyone in the world whom would you want as a dinner guest and why? And if you had to be quarantined with them for a month or more, would your answer change? Admittedly, there, there are some liberties taken with these questions. Quarantine obviously wasn't in the original question. If I could have anyone in the world as my dinner guest, I would want... Oh my goodness, I'm just thinking of a group of people. Uh, it could be J.R.R. Tolkien, it could be C.S. Lewis. Uh, but I think I'd want Oswald and Biddy Chambers. I think I'd want to have them over for dinner. But also the literary nerd in me is like, Tolkien! Um, so can I have four or five? Can I have five people? Can I have uh, Tolkien? No, that's four. I can't count. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis in the Chambers. Uh, I just, besides the literary aspect, which all of them have written stuff. Actually, um, Biddy was the one that wrote down all of Oswald's sermons and things like that. She was skilled in shorthand. And how did I learn this? From Mrs. Oswald Chambers by Michelle Yule. This isn't a sponsorship. I just like this book. I recommend picking it up if you're more interested in learning about the life and the relationship of Oswald and Biddy. Super cute. I if I had to be quarantined with them, I don't think my answer would change. I don't I don't know them personally. They're all dead, so uh, I don't know if I they'd get on my nerves or if I'd get on theirs. But I just there'd be so much wisdom in in Oswald and Biddy, you know. And C.S. Lewis was very wise as well. And I've never really read anything of Tolkien other than his Lord of the Rings book, but I'm a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, so I think that would be super cool. And I'd be like, yeah, literary party all up in here. Question two, would you like to be famous in what way? I have to admit that I do. That's something that I've wanted ever since I was a kid. I mean, there are a lot of people I, who at least they want to be noticed right they at least want they want people to know who they are they want to be recognized and popular honestly I have to confess yeah that is something I desire and I know it's not necessarily something I should want and the reason is because if I want popularity for myself it's for selfish purposes it's for selfish reasons and I am a Christian and I do believe in God and I do have Jesus as my Savior and Lord so that should not be a primary goal in life is to be famous and to be well known but I have to confess that it is something I desire. In what way? Well, in a positive way, hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, I have to admit that being famous is something that I would like because I like the attention. I like to be noticed. I like the praise of man. And that's just something I guess that needs to continually be worked on as I grow and as I mature. Last question before making a telephone call. Do you ever rehearse what you are going to say and why? I don't. I don't rehearse what I'm going to say. I don't really need to. I've done it. I, I'm comfortable calling people and talking on the phone. I will contact customer service digitally if I can, but I'll also make that phone call. I'm comfortable with talking with people over the phone. And I typically know what I want to say or I've just done it enough times where I, I know how to talk to people on the phone. So no, I don't necessarily rehearse. But have I ever actually done that before? I've definitely rehearsed some things that I was going to say before, before I've said them to people, but not, not necessarily on the phone and like rehearse like in my head. But it was, it's one of those situations where you're making up a conversation in your head and you think that you can predict what the other person is going to act and say, and then they don't follow the script that's in your head. First of all, how dare they? They need to memorize that script. But no, typically I don't need to rehearse before I call on the phone. So those are the first three answers to the first three questions. Stay tuned for our collaboration video coming up where Maria, Lindsay, 
Tanya and I will all be talking to one another and answering these questions. You are also incredibly important. Have a wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.